Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE. The FE stands for Fan Edition, and hopefully we do get some really good performance out of this thing, because I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know some of my favorite Android tablets are the Samsung tablets, specifically the Samsung Galaxy S7 Plus, which is definitely one of the best ones on the market as making this video. So if you do pick up one of these tablets, just keep in mind it will come with this S Pen. It's also going to come with a lower watt charger, but the tablet itself does support up to a 45 watt quick charger. You're also going to receive a standard USB Type-C cable. Now Samsung is offering these in a few different color variants and storage slash RAM variants, but the one I happen to have here is the Mystic Green version, 64GB of storage and 4GB of RAM. But they do offer this up to 256 gigabytes of internal storage and 8 gigabytes of RAM. I went with the cheapest version, and as of making this video, I was able to pick it up for $439. It is on sale, usually around $529. And just to give you an idea of how big this 12.4 inch tablet is, I wanted to compare it to two others. At the bottom, we have the 2021 Amazon Fire 10, and over on the right hand side, we have the new Xiaomi Mi Pad Pro. When it comes to the Tab S7 FE model, it's not coming in as powerful as the Tab S7 or the S7 Plus. I was really hoping that they would have dropped this with a better CPU, but it still has very respectable specs when it comes to these Android tablets. The CPU is the Snapdragon 778. This is an 8-core CPU. We have four running at up to 2.4 GHz, and the other four running at 1.8. For the GPU, we have the Arduino 642. You can get this with 4, 6, or 8 gigabytes of RAM, but all of them have LPDDR4X RAM. When it comes to storage, kind of the same thing here. 64, 128, 256. But all of these do support a micro SD card up to 1 terabyte. When it comes to the display, we have a 12.4 inch TFT LCD. It's definitely not on par with an AMOLED or a Super AMOLED, but it still looks really good. It's running at 60 hertz, and it's got a resolution of 1600 by 2560. We have a 10,000 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt fast charging, and they claim up to 14 hours of video playback on this, and I can definitely see that with that 10,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and GPS built in, and when it comes to the operating system, this is running Android 11 with One UI 3.1.1 as of making this video. It'll probably be upgraded in the future. And another awesome thing the FE model has going for it is this does support Samsung DeX right out of the box, and we have display over USB Type-C. So we can connect this to a bigger screen, be it a monitor or a television, and run Samsung DeX. If you're not familiar with that, basically it turns these tablets or Samsung Galaxy phones into an Android desktop. When it comes to UI performance, this thing is lightning fast. I don't really notice a difference between the UI on this versus the more powerful S7 Plus. And uh, just to give you some cold boots here, we'll go into Google Play. And everything loads right up really quickly. I mean, we do have that Wi-Fi 6 built in. And 4 gigabytes of RAM is plenty for a tablet like this. This is a nice little media powerhouse. If somebody handed me this tablet and told me that it had a Snapdragon 865 Plus, I probably wouldn't even notice the difference. Until you get down to intensive 3D gaming with native Android games and emulation. Now that's where the S7 Plus is definitely going to shine over this, but this does a really good job. And when it comes to media playback, this does have Widevine Level 1, so we can get Full HD with our favorite streaming apps, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go. Right here you can see that Netflix is telling us that we have Level 1, Full HD, so we're good to go with that kind of content. And on the cheaper, less expensive tablets that you're going to find on Amazon and eBay, this is definitely not the case. Usually they have level 3, which is the lowest you can go, and you can only get standard definition from those streaming apps. And speaking of streaming, here's a little bit of YouTube video playback. Now from within here, we can actually go all the way up to 4K. If I can find the option, they've changed this around. There we go. So we'll set it to 4K. I know we don't have a 4K screen here, but uh, let's go ahead and go full screen with it. I do have stats for nerds on. And with 4K playback, those initial frames will drop, but it'll hold steady the whole time after that. Now this one looks like it's a bit more than the last one I tested, but as you can see, it does hold steady even with 4K. And if you wanted to go to 1440p, 1080, 720, this doesn't drop any frames at all. I mean, it's definitely powerful enough to do 4K, but with a screen like this, I'd say 2K or 1440p is fine. So the next thing I did was run a few benchmarks on the FE version, and I kind of wanted to face it off against the Tab S7 Plus. And the S7 Plus did pull ahead in all of the benchmarks that I ran, 
but I was really surprised to see how close it is when it comes to CPU performance. But when we take a look at GPU performance, the S7 Plus is way ahead of the FE, and I kind of expected it to be. I mean, I don't think they wanted to release something a little more powerful than that S7 Plus just yet and call it an S7 version. But the final one I ran was in 2.2. We got a 404,377 on the FE, and on the S7 Plus, 577,264. Moving over to some native Android gaming. First up, we have Asphalt 9 Legends, and I did go into the settings trying to get this to go to 60, but unfortunately just kind of locked at 30. But overall, I mean, it'll handle this game just fine. So let's take it up a little bit more, and that's going to be Call of Duty Mobile. So with this one here, I have the graphics set to high, frame rate set to max, and it's running at 60. I mean, it'll run like this all day. Very well optimized game, and this chipset in the FE can definitely handle it. And the final native Android game I wanted to test before we move over to emulation was Genshin Impact. I'm set to medium, 60 FPS, I do have Bloom set to off, and it's running pretty decently. We still get some dips. You could run this at 30 FPS, high settings, but I kind of wanted to see how far we could take it at 60. And around medium, maybe drop some of those settings down to low, 60 FPS is kind of the way to go with this one. Or, like I mentioned, high at 30, which still looks great, and it plays just fine on this tablet. I was very interested to see how the FE handled emulation, and the first one we have to test here is Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. We are upscaled to 1920 by 1440, and when it comes to Dreamcast on this tablet here, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, we actually have two to choose from, Flycast or ReDream, you're going to be able to play it at full speed. 3DS was another one I wanted to test, and I was pretty impressed by the performance here. I'm using Citra MMJ 1X resolution, this uses the OpenGL backend. And with the easier to emulate stuff, you should be good to go. I mean, this is running at 60 here, Mario Kart 7. But I'm sure if I ran into some harder to emulate games, it would lag out. Overall, not bad at all. PSP is another one I always like to test. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP from the Google Play Store. 3X resolution, Vulcan backend, Ghost of Sparta, running at 60. So if we're able to run this at 3X, the easier to emulate stuff could probably go up to 5X, no problem at all. And the final emulator I wanted to test, at least for this video, was the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube and Wii. First up, GameCube, Automotalista, 1X resolution, Vulcan back in, it's running great. Now when I started the race here, I did notice it lagging just a bit as I was taken off from the line. But as soon as I got going, it jumped up to 60 and I never saw it drop under 57. It's really impressive. And the final one I wanted to test here was Tatsunoko vs Capcom, one of the best fighting games for Wii. 1x resolution, still using that Vulcan back end, it looks absolutely amazing, and it's running at 60. There were some dips when there's lots of particles on screen, but that's kind of a given with this game, especially on an ARM chip, but I'd say that this is really playable. So one of my favorite parts about these higher-end Samsung tablets is they have DeX built-in. It's known as Samsung DeX, it's really easy to enable. You can use it with the built-in screen, we're booting into it right now. And basically what this does is it turns Android into kind of a desktop operating system. Makes it really easy to navigate with a mouse, trackpad, or a keyboard. You can also use touch if you want to. Now using it on the built-in screen is good and all, but personally I use Samsung DeX on an external monitor more than I do anything. It can be a monitor or a television. And since the S7 FE does support display over USB Type-C, I'm just going to plug in my USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. I've also got a mouse and keyboard connected, and the way I have it set up right now is as soon as I plug everything in, it's just going to mirror the screen. We can actually set this up to automatically go into DeX if you want to, but you can always use this as a mirrored option. But we're going to go ahead and enable Samsung DeX, and this way we still have Android over on our tablet side and DeX on the big screen. So we can still use the tablet as an Android tablet, no problem at all. We can actually run apps on both. We can run them on the tablet screen and the monitor or TV, whatever you opt to plug into. And with DeX, we do have multi-window, which is something I personally really like. It's just like a desktop, but instead of running Windows or OS X, it's still Android. I've got a keyboard and mouse plugged into the HDMI adapter. This one just happens to have two USB ports, but you can always use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse if you wanted to. 
I've had a really good experience with this, especially on the higher end Samsung tablets like the S7 Plus. And if you wanted to get some gaming out of the way on Dex, it'll also work just fine. Just load up Minecraft. I've still got my Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth and I can play on the big screen. And by the way, Minecraft runs amazingly on the S7 FE. So overall, I do think this device is a great Android tablet. It's definitely up there in the top 10 Android tablets on the market right now, but it really has nothing on the higher end S7 or the S7 Plus. And when it comes to pricing, at least retail pricing with no sales going on, I don't think that this would be a great option over the S7 or the S7 Plus. You can pick up a refurbished S7 Plus for cheaper than this right now on eBay, but if you're looking for a great Android tablet and you don't want to break the bank and you just can't do refurbished, I mean, there's some people out there that just won't buy used, then this might be a great option for you because it definitely performs really well when it comes to Android tablets in 2021. So if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up or even the S7 Plus, I will leave a few links in the description. I will have one more video coming up with the FE. I got a few little things planned that I wanted to get out of the way. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this tablet, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.